Nikthos Shrine to Nyx is the most powerful ramp land in modern, and today I'm going to show you why. This legendary land adds mana equal to your devotion to a color, which can easily get out of hand when you have spells that add 4 devotion for free on turn 1. Seriously? So Larry, what do you think about the state of modern? Seems healthy for now. No changes. <laughs> this deck is incredibly consistent, with tons of ways to find Nykthos when in need. And once we've got all that mana to spend, the possibilities are endless, with ample threats in the main deck and a Karn wish for it that's only a down tick away. This deck goes real big, real fast. Can you keep up? Right off the bat, our first opening hand has crazy potential if we can find a Nykthos by turn 3. Although risky, I opt to keep and put Leyline of the Guild Pack into play. Most decks are playing Leyline for its synergies with Scion of Draco and Leyline Binding, and while we have Scion in this deck, the value of Leyline in this build is more so its ability to generate free green devotion. I start with my Surveil Land, which doesn't reveal a land, so I bin it and pass the turn. They ramp on turn 1, Arboreal Grazer and Devalicate the Molten Pinnacle, which means this is either Scapeshift or Amulet Titan. Either way, I need to get a move on. I naturally draw into my Nykthos, which means if my Oath of Nyssa can find a third land, we'll be in business next turn. It reveals Poseidon, and we're good to go. I play out my Hierarch and pass it back, with 6 Devotion in play. Surprisingly, my opponent only has a land drop for turn, so it's back our way. We draw into Cavalier of Thorns, which seems like a good place to start. I cast it, ramp an extra forest into play, but don't have a use for the extra 2 mana floating. With that being said, with the One Ring and Storm the Festival in hand, we're set up to go off next turn. A fourth land and our opponent has a One Ring of their own, and now it's time to have some fun. I draw Kiora, which means I can untap Nykthos for even more mana. Let's start by adding 10 and casting her out, and then follow up with a Storm the Festival. It reveals another Nykthos in a One Ring, both of which we can put directly into play. I draw another Storm the Festival off the ring. I fire it off with 5 mana floating. Karn and Leyline of Abundance enter play. I activate Kiora, untap Nykthos, and add 13 more mana, upping my total to 16. I tutor for the Chain Bell out of my sideboard, which will let me activate my Planeswalkers once more. Kiora untaps Nykthos for a second time, and now we're up to 19 mana. Storm the Festivities is flashback for the third time this turn, netting another Oath of Nyssa, and another Karn. Oath finds another Nykthos, and crazy enough, I haven't made my land drop return, so I play it out and ramp up to 22 mana. At this point, it's hilarious my opponent hasn't scooped yet. I add Cyanodraco to the mix, and apparently that's the tipping point. They pack it up, and we're up a game. Sand is super risky. I'm going to keep it though. Leyline, see what you got. Valakit, return, draw Nyssa. Uh, we'll start on Noble. Wooded Foothills, fetch. Hopefully an Explorer. Stomping Ground Shock. Farseek. Okay, that's good. I get a Commercial District. Draw an Oath. If we can find if we can find a Nykthos, we'll be in business. Let's start with an Oath. Trigger. Scion. Okay. Not what we're looking for. Uh, another Oath. Keep the new one. All right, found Nykthos. Put that to our hand. Any order for the rest. Nykthos can't do anything with it. We'll pass turn. But after the last game, our opponent knew what was coming and had a plan. They cast Wish to get Alpine Moon out of their sideboard to shut down my Nykthos. So while I'm able to develop my board with Utopia Sprawl in the ring, I need Nykthos to go crazy. So we're going to need to find Karn to get Haywire Might to unlock our land. Sure enough, on my next turn I'm able to tap out and play Storm the Festival, which reveals Karn. Minus two and put Might into my hand. But once again, they've got a plan. Another wish to get Cursed Totem, so I can't activate the Might. Annoying. But fortunately, I draw into Archmage's Charm, which just so happens to exile artifacts. Start by exiling the Totem. Two mana for a Might. Exile the Moon. Gain two life. Nykthos. Cast a Nyssa. Untap the Nykthos. Uh, we're going to draw three. All right, found another ring, which I think should lock this up. At ten mana. Untap Nykthos. Karn minus. Get a Sundering Titan. Cast the Titan. It's going to trigger Kiora. Uh, red, green, and our opponent scoops it up. So needless to say, round one was a great success, 
but round two we find ourselves paired against one of the best decks in the format, Goryeo Reanimator. Our opening hand is subpar, so we're forced to mulligan down to six without any ley lines. This hand is slow, but it has Karn, which is one of the key cards in the matchup, so I decide to keep. We're gonna start Citadel green, pass the turn the other way. Flood Strand coming back to us. All right, we draw a Sprawl, don't mind ramping. Uh, we'll fetch, get a basic, Sprawl on the forest, green, Oath of Nyssa, trigger. I think we're gonna take Hiora here, Hierarch, pass turn. Meticulous Archive, Flooded Strand, back to us. So we can have a pretty good turn this turn. Wooded Foothills, we're one mana short of doing everything. Three mana for Kiora, untap our land, fetch, get a basic, Karn, minus, we'll get a Tormod's Crypt. Cast the Crypt, pass turn. Now that the Crypt is in play, our opponent isn't going to be able to pull off any reanimator shenanigans anytime soon. It should buy us the time we need to establish our board and execute our game plan. Gala Shrine. I think this is going to be a prismatic ending. Oh, Bone Shard's pretty good. Uh, yeah, we'll let that happen. Back our way, drawn to a Ley Line, which doesn't do much. Five mana for Nyssa, uptick Nyssa, combat, attack for three. It's gonna trigger Exalted, opponent's down to 11. Two mana, untap, four mana, Ley Line, pass turn. Opponent with their fourth land, two mana for another Mending, up to 13. Discard the Vengeance, fetch, down to 12, Hallowed Fountain tapped. Drawn to a one ring, pretty good. I'm gonna play around a Solitude here. Four mana, one ring, draw a card. Another Ley Line, four mana, another Ley Line. Activate Nyssa, activate Kiora, combat, attack. Opponent's down six life. Opponent flashes back amending, goes up to eight. Scoops it up, pretty impressive first game. So that's the blueprint, and we were able to reproduce it to a T in game two to nab the game and the match. So we're firing on all cylinders and off to a 2-0 start. And surprisingly, we haven't gotten paired into any other ley line decks as of yet. But that is about to change. They have a ley line, we have a ley line. Whose is better? Misty and a crashing footfalls. We turn to a forest. Uh, let's start with our citadel. Say green, pass turn. Footfalls down to three. Flooded strand, fetch. Basic forest, two mana, a scion. Draw a Hierarch, which isn't bad. Uh, we'll start with an Oath, Kiora, Forest, Hierarch, pass turn. Fun with three lands, attack for four. We'll go down to 16, and they do nothing else. Draw a Ley Line of our own. Start with a Kiora. Doesn't actually affect the board, so I don't think they need to worry too much about it. Uh, we're gonna add four Ley Line. They fetch, fetch again. Lush Portico, Force Negation to the Graveyard. And they besage you our Nykthos. Get a Lush Portico trigger. Karn. Karn's probably not bad. Uh, we'll put that on top. Pass the turn. Footfalls down to one. They're up to three in hand. Play land. Fetch. Thundering Falls. Land to the graveyard. Attack at me. Down to 12. Drawn to Karn. Uh, we're going to play out a ring. See if they have a force. They don't. Trigger the ring. Draw a Cavalier. Uh, Kiora. Untap the ring. Draw two more. Utopia Sprawl. Commercial District. Sprawl the forest. Say green, commercial district, trigger, storm the festival. I think we can put that in our graveyard. We'll pass turn. All right, rhinos are coming into play. Three cards in hand. Opponent with a ley line binding. Hit our ring. It's fine. Four mana, blood moon. That's pretty good. It's ridiculous these decks can play blood moon. I guess it makes sense why they were fetching basics. Attack a Kiora. Untap. I think we start with Cavalier. It's going to be triggers. Cavalier first. Uh, we'll put a Nykthos into play. Utopia Sprawl the Hand. So I can untap the forest, besage you with the Blood Moon, and then produce a ton of mana. I don't think I've actually played a land yet this turn either. Uh, besage you Blood Moon, you get a Meticulous Archive, you put a card on top. I'm gonna play an Oath, keep one of them, trigger. I'll put Scion the Hand, 13 mana in pool. Scion, uh, draw with Kiora, draw Charm, Karn, minus Karn, now we'll get an explosives. Play the explosives for zero. Blow up the explosives. Sprawl our forest. Green. Exile the ley line. And we'll pass turn. Pun with force of vigor. Down two ley lines. Still have a ton of gas in play though. Attack. Uh, yeah, we'll block. Minor detail about Cavalier of Thorns. They missed that one. We win, so it's on to the next one.
And after an uneventful loss in round four to a boring pile of expensive cards, we're on to round five and find ourselves in a very tight match against Blue Red Merc Tide. After losing a lopsided game one and winning a lopsided game two, it all comes down to this final game to see if we can walk away with the 4-1. Opponent keeps their seven. I think this is too slow. I think we have to mulligan. And unfortunately can't keep that. We'll mulligan again. All right. Uh, we'll keep bottom Emrakul and Visage. Ley line into play. Put him with Scalding Tarn, Fetch, Steam Vent Shock, and a Dragon's Rage. Draw Storm the Festival. Play out a Citadel. Tormod's Crypt. Yield through the turn. Fiery Islet. Shredder. Attack for one. We're going to 19. Let's see if we can pull a Nykthos. Not a Nykthos. Uh, play out the Windswept Teeth, pass turn. Put with Spire Bluff, Preordain, Trigger, Rag of the End of the Graveyard, attack for two, go down 17. We'll fetch end of turn. Scion, it's likely that gets countered, but I think we have to keep it. Land, two mana for Scion, and it resolves. Wow, it's back their way. If they can't get rid of this Ley Line, they might be in trouble. No attacks, two mana for an iteration post combat, they keep a card on top. Ragavan, play out a land. Ragavan into play, trigger the Shredder. Another iteration to the graveyard, four cards in hand. Back our way. All right, we found our fourth land, which is excellent. Start with an attack, hit for four. Opponent's down to 11. Play out the Besaju, Karn. They have a spell pierce, it looks like. Put Bobble in the graveyard, yield through the turn. Now let's pause for a moment. As you can see, my entire strategy hinges on my opponent not being able to remove the Slay Line. But if they can get rid of it, everything will fall apart. Honestly, this shouldn't work, nor should it be allowed. It's crazy we've managed to get them all the way down to one life. I naturally draw into Nykthos, which means I can finally cast the Storm of the Festival in my hand. But they have Force of Negation, which means it's exiled and I won't be able to flash it back. I draw a ring on my next turn, which is met by a third straight counterspell. They do nothing on their turn, and I draw into Archmage's Charm. I decide to pass the turn, waiting for them to make a move, and they do, channeling Ottawara to bounce my ley line and crack the game wide open. But I'm able to respond, putting a 1 1 counter on my dragon to have it deal 5 damage to their dragon, also gaining me 5 more life. I draw into another charm and attempt to get my ley line back into play, but a fourth counter spell denies my attempt. You'll notice here, despite all these spells, the Dragon's Rage channelers still do not have Delirium which is good for them because I'd be able to block with my Scion. So if I use this charm to kill their Ledger Shredder, I might be able to attack for the win. But my play style is very conservative, so I decide it's best to wait and leave a card on top. We now have four card types. I'm gonna fire off charm end of turn. I'm gonna get a Cavalier. They're gonna draw off their Bobble, draw into Kiora Cavalier, and they're gonna heat down the Scion. Two triggers, Scion's gone, Cavalier in play, and they have another counter spell. Oh my gosh. They discard Disdainful Stroke. All right, pressure's on. Attack, down 22. And I hit a Karn off the top. That is pretty good. Shuts off our rings. Triggers for the Dragon's Rages. Keep cards on top. Plus Karn, back our way. Leyline, can cast Cure. Not worth it though. We'll just pass turn. We really needed that Karn. Karn into Ballista was one of our outs. Attack with the team. We're going down to 11. Trigger Ragavan. And they hit a Utopia Sprawl, that's fine. Iteration, triggers, exile a Murktide, preordain, triggers, counter on the Shredder, two on the bottom, here comes a Murktide. All right, Murktide into play, two mana up, untap. Really need to find a ring, and this is just gonna be lethal. We'll scoop it up, crazy game. So for all of our efforts, we yield a three and two record. And while ramping is a ton of fun, I do think this ley line nonsense has got to go. Thank you for tuning in today. I will see you all again very soon. And until next time, you know the deal, my friends. Be well. <laughs>